Hi folks, two great Fusion 360 tips and one quirky fix. So remember how I sort of fumbled around trying to edit the length of the shaft, adding planes and geometry? It's so much easier than that. And a big shout out to the folks at Autodesk, which I'm going to come back to in a second. What we need to do is stitch this together. There are two ways to do it. I'm not sure I understand the differences. I'll show you the two ways. But to remember, refresh, if you basically, you know, if you click that and hit delete, you see we've got this sort of hollow cavity in here, which is, which is weird. That's not what we're used to with solid modeling. So the one way to fix it is to simply do create boundary fill. These menus are hidden. That was my other quirky fix today as I found out the reason they're hidden is if you hide the tips and tricks with this minus button, it defaults to hiding both of these. Instead, you need to click hide here and now these won't self collapse, which is in my opinion, a mistake on Autodesk's part, but whatever, I got it fixed. Left mouse click and drag left or right to left over all this. That selects the tools. I have no idea what tools is, but it does it. And then cells, I just do the same thing. Click OK. And now what you've done here is you've created a new thing, a new entity. So we've got the original here, and then I think the body's here. So yeah, so if we unview the original, and we just turn the bodies back on, now you've got this nice shiny part that looks like it's a proper solid model in terms of the color rendering. And if we take a look, right click, press pull, select this, look at that. We can start to do stuff. Now that doesn't actually make sense because we want to extend the length of that. So watch this. Just click on the fillet, hit the delete key, right click, press pull, select this. Now we can shorten that guy up and you know go back and add a chamfer. Boom, just like that. How cool is that? You can remember the other thing we were trying to do was add a larger circle here. So click on the circle, select anything on that plane to create a new sketch. Start in the center, come out to wherever we want. And then we can do, let's see here, right click, press pull. Well, I thought these things were supposed to stay not hidden. Hopefully that works. Click this and we can do cut. Let's see if we can do to that, see if that works. Boom, just like so folks. Actually, that was a little hiccup there. Didn't, uh, oh, looks like I had something selected. I don't know what I did there. Oh, interesting. Well, I don't know exactly what that did, but let's try that again. Press pull. There we go. That was my first trick, how to work with solids. That's really important because we're actually just about to film a little Fusion 360 video on engraving an AR-15 lower receiver. And one of the things we want to do is take some geometry from an existing part, try to copy that logo or text over. And we're going to need to know how to do this stitching, especially if you're trying to download models off of GrabCAD or other sort of free resources out there, which is awesome. Oh, sorry. The other way you can do that um, stitching trick, we're starting over from scratch here, is go from model to patch. I have no idea what patch is, but we'll go into it. And then you can do modify stitch, and then just select everything as well. The tolerance shouldn't matter because we're starting with an existing solid model. It would be more of an issue, I think, if you were dealing with some sort of a sculpture, um, probably not in the machining world. Hopefully we'll see, click OK. Now you haven't created a new second body, but you've just created this one as a proper solid model. So again, you know, you can right click, press pull, and you know, increase the, this stuff and, and edit it like so. I think I like the first one a little better. So feel free to experiment with those two. The one thing I will say is if you're having problems with something, make sure you're selecting the right stuff. There's selection filters that are clearly very important for what you're trying to do. Uh, I'm not offering it necessarily a solution right here. I'm just saying if something's not acting right, I would, I would definitely check those selection filters. The last thing I want to mention is just another reason why I'm excited about Fusion 360 and willing to get behind it. It's not only the value and the price point and the critical mass, but they have this screencast tool. It's a free tool that will not only record their software, but it looks like it will record any software. 
when there are already so many folks that are posting solutions, problems. It's just such a good way uh, to get help. I'd like to claim that you know this is something we've done for a long time when we've helped folks with Sprout Cam or other software. We'll do private videos for them, which is so good because they can go refer back to it. They can see you actually moving the mouse. It's so much better than on the phone or even in person at like a training session or um, trying to follow a generic DVD. Blah. So the fact that they're putting that kind of talent and resources and they've got the Autodesk form or Fusion 360 form where people are posting it. For example, that AR15 uh, lower receiver, I was having a problem copying and pasting some of the sketch geometry. At like 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. this morning, I posted a screencast and within 30 minutes I had a couple of people respond and I'm only, I'm a newbie, I don't have any street cred in the uh, forum. So awesome to see that stuff, folks. Makes me excited. With that, appreciate you watching, folks. Take care. See you soon.